Uh, Howard, uh, tell us today about today's initiative. Well, we're here at Wembley today uh, in support of the FA Carlsberg Referee Awards Programme, which is an initiative to to really reward and to recognise the, the huge number of volunteers up and down the country who are involved in refereeing, um, not only as active referees, but also those people who offer instruction, um, mentorship, coaching and assessment as well. Um, so, as somebody who's benefited so much from volunteers in my career, from the day that I started 23 years ago, and as somebody who's benefited, made it right to the very top of the game, I'm more than happy to be here to support this, this initiative and uh, hopefully it'll highlight all that good work that goes off creating the next generation of, of Premier League referees. Uh, what would you say the key attributes are to being a top flight referee? Um, I think that um, you need an awful lot of um, self-discipline and self-belief. You need good communication skills. You need to be able to manage people. Um, a love of the game as well is important. You know? And I think you know, we need to recognise that people who do become involved in, in refereeing do so because of their love for the game, because they're passionate about the, the game of football. Um, so when you combine all those things together, um, you know, you've got the recipe for somebody who can, who can, you know, do a job as a referee. And, and, and when you start, of course, you know, you, you've an awful lot to learn. And um, it's, um, it's at times when you start that you need the, uh, the help of all the volunteers that we've, we've talked about. Um, you started off as a police officer, and you know, other referees such as David Ellery had a position as a headmaster. Do you think maybe holding a position of authority before going, you know? becoming a professional referee actually helps in your career? I think maybe the, 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 the occupations where you're in contact with, with people, where you're dealing with people on a, on a daily basis, um, maybe give you um, an indication of the type of people who are attracted towards refereeing, because it's, it's a similar situation where you're dealing with players, you're dealing with, with situations, dealing with people. Um, but a wide range of, of people, I think, um, can make really good, good referees from whatever background male or female, whatever age really, you know, um, it depends on the individual person and if you're the sort of person that likes dealing with people, um, then, you know, maybe you're suited to, to a role as a referee. Are there any up-and-coming young referees that have caught your eye that you think might have a bright future in the game? There's, there's lots and lots of young referees. It's quite different now from when I started back in the late 80s. There weren't so many young referees involved in the game. That's one of the things that attracted me to, to refereeing, really, when, when, when I realised I wasn't going to make it as a, as a professional footballer, even though I thought I would. I'm smiling now. Looking back, I was miles away. But uh, uh, my, my dad suggested to me that I consider taking, uh, taking a refereeing course. He'd become a referee himself in his, in his 30s. And, you know, at first I wasn't interested. Um, you know, referees in my mind's eye were all bold old men. Um, and I've become one. Eventually, but uh, but I decided uh, it'd be nice to have some young people involved. So me and a young a young mate from uh, from school went to to a course, and um, you know when you, when I look, compare that to, to now, we've got a lot of really good young people getting involved in the game in the mid teens to late teens, yeah. male and female, um, and and that's good for the game. Really, it is. You know, it's it's good for the future of of refereeing, and strong positive um, numbers involved in refereeing. Is beneficial for the game as well. You know, we need as many games as possible covered by qualified referees up and down the country. That enhances the enjoyment of the players, uh, and it, you know, it, it ensures that fair play is respected and that, and that the players are protected as well. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have commented on your physique and how it, you know it can be you know intimidating you know over players to actually have that. Uh, what is your like daily fitness regime? We're really quite lucky. The, the guys who operate um, at uh, Premier League level in, in England are looking that we're supported so well by by um, lots of people. Really, who are, are full time and dedicated to our to our performance levels. Um, and that team includes two sports scientists who um, set us fitness schedules each and every week based upon our our commitment to games at home and abroad. It's really easy for me. I just follow their schedules. Uh, I work at the intensity that they they demand of me. In the same way as a player would for, for a fitness coach in a club, and he um, he re reviews my training schedules. Um, uh, it's really easy, you know. He's the he's the expert. I work to what he what he asked me to do, and um, and the same for all of us. You know, we need to be fit enough to, to meet the demands of the modern game. It gets faster all of the time. The players are athletes without any shadow of a doubt, who are getting quicker all the time, and uh, and the game demands that we are fit enough to cope with 
with modern day football. You know, in the last minute of a big game, making a, a decision at one penalty area in the 89th minute, uh, and, and 30 seconds later having to make an equally big decision at the other end, and, and getting from A to B without having to think about how we're going to do it. Has there been a game where you've struggled to keep up with the pace of the game? No, not really. I mean, not uh, not recently because we are so well prepared uh, and because we take our preparation really professionally, then it's not an issue. But I can remember stages in my career where I've stepped up a level. I remember my first ever game in reserve league football. I went to uh, Derby County versus Leicester City. And that was really my first time involved in professional football. Yeah. And, you know, I remember being taken aback by the pace of it and thinking to myself, you know, Howard, you're going to have to do something to get yourself fitter than what I was at the time. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to cope with the demands that were being placed upon me. And, and that, was a, that was an awakening. And uh, you know, I've had those, those sort of uh, occasions during my career. But um, you know, uh, uh, where we are now in 2012, in my opinion, we've never been better prepared. Um, we spoke to Graham Paul earlier in the year, and he mentioned an initiative you know, that he'd like to see, and that referees having managers uh, so they could go in at half-time, have somebody maybe point out their positioning or you know something that might be happening off the ball that, that's being looked over. Is that something you'd support? We're well supported with coaches um, at all levels of the game really. We talked about the volunteers that we have uh, more locally um, who act as mentors. Mentorship is really important. You know, it's, uh, it's important that referees, when they start out refereeing, you know, when they're still learning the, 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 the skills to become an effective referee, that they have somebody that they can share their experiences with. Somebody who can look at the game with them, talk about situations, um, and, and that coaching continues right up to the, uh, the Premier League, League level, and we reflect on our performances post-match with, with a referee coach, and with the intention of developing our skills and, and, and always improving, and, um, and, and you know, coaching within refereeing is important. Are there any other initiatives you'd like to see brought in to aid officials? No, I think the initiative that we've got here today at Wembley, you know, with the, the launch of the, the FA Carlsberg Referee Awards, is, is an example of how people value the important role that, that referees play. We need to keep encouraging people to take up the whistle from whatever background, whether it's uh, male or female, whatever age, whatever their background is from playing or non-playing. We need to encourage as many people as possible to keep, to keep, um, you know, to keep football strong in this country. We need games to be refereed. You know, we need to protect the players, protect the image of the game, and uh, and um, you know, the more people that we can encourage by initiatives like today, the uh, the better we all we all are. Do you feel, in general, that players are showing more respect towards officials these days? I think that um, you know, we're all mindful about the, the need to ensure that um, the, um, the, uh, the field of play is um, a positive place for everybody involved, um, be it match officials, players, coaches, spectators, um, and you know, we've seen clear evidence in the last few years that play behaviour has improved. Um, the, um, the FA. Uh, introduced the respect program some years ago. The Premier League introduced their get on with the game program, and I have a, a really strong view that um, we've seen a really strengthening of relationships on the field of play in the last few years. And of course, football's football's an emotive thing. It uh, generates emotions. That's one of the good things about it. You know that, that people care about it. People want to win. Of course, they care about you know decisions that are made. They care about whether they do win or lose. Um, we expect some emotions, of course, but you know we need to keep working hard together, players, coaches, referees, administrators, to, to make sure that the game develops in a, in a positive way going forward, whilst enhancing the emotions that football creates. How difficult was the 2010 World Cup final to officiate? Um, yeah, the World Cup, the World Cup was an, an unbelievable experience, really. I mean, um, when, you, when you consider that I started refereeing back in 1989, doing under 10s football locally in South Yorkshire. Um, as somebody who had been introduced to refereeing through my father, um, ne I never held an ambition to become a, a referee, but decided to take it up. Um, that night, when I passed my exam in 1989, I, I knew that somebody somewhere in the world would go on to take charge of the 2010 World Cup final. Somebody was bound to take charge of that game, and that person didn't know it back in 1989, but somebody would do it. It turned out to be me. You know, so amazing things can happen through refereeing. They really can, you know, and, and the opportunities are, are there. Um, Great honour, great pri privilege to be to be uh, handed responsibility for that game, um, and 
of course, you know, as, as match officials, we always hope that we can be, you know, anonymously competent is a word that I use quite often, you know, i.e. that we are, that we are you know, effective in the job that we're being asked to do, but that nobody's speaking about us. That's fine. That's fine. And sometimes the game lends itself to that, to that sort of, um, that sort of review post-match. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have to step up to the plate and make decisions that, that the game demands upon, upon you, demands of you. Um, it was a difficult game for sure. You know, it was an important game for everybody involved. The, the, the biggest game of everybody's career, including mine. Um, and it, it, you know, it was a challenge. It was a challenge for for, for two hours. Um, but you know, for me, the important thing was trying to be a, a calming influence, trying to keep people's attentions on the football, trying to do the job I was there to do to protect the players, to protect the game. Um, and it, it, you know, it was a it was a testing testing match for sure. And uh, but still looking back, you know. I, a great honour to take charge of the game, to be asked to uh, to, to referee the match, and um, that's something that you know um, I hold very fond memories of the entire experience in, in South Africa. Yeah. And then you got the the Euros as well, where so it's two you know, consecutive major international finals. Um, do you see that as an acknowledgement that you are perhaps the best referee in the world currently, uh, or do you think there's still more to achieve? I would never ever claim to be the best ever. Um, you know, I work hard at what I do. I care about football passionately, and I care about refereeing as well. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm really, really um, honoured to, to have been given the opportunity that I've been given. In fact, I've been to the last three major tournaments with uh, with the Euro 2008 as well. So again, to be selected for 2012 for the Euros in, in Poland, Ukraine was a great honour. It really was. I think what it showed is that I'd kept my motivation um, for the game, my love for the game, and that um, to be selected was, was, was something quite special. I'm a privileged guy. I've got a great seat in the house every Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon taking charge of Barclays Premier League games and, uh, and football league games as well. Um, it's, it's a great place to be. And, um, you know, I would recommend to anybody who's thinking about a possibility of becoming involved in the game, staying involved in the game, maybe at the end of a playing career. Yeah. You know, consider refereeing. It's something that um, will develop you as a person. It'll um, it'll enhance your you know your personal characteristics and uh, attributes. Um, it'll get you fit. It'll keep you fit, and it'll give you a real sense of satisfaction when you contribute to to the game in such a positive way. Um, finally, uh, why does footy matter to you? Foot is everything to me. <laughs> um, quite often, I'll be asked to uh, to write down my my hobbies if I am asked to fill in a, a personal questionnaire. And you know something, football's everything. 